Well, g'day everyone. It's great to be with you, my many friends from the National Farmers Federation for your national conference. I'm sorry I can't be there with you in person today. Uh, it was great to be with Fiona and Tony just the other day in my office in Canberra. And so I wish you all the very best for a very successful conference. Can I begin by acknowledging Australia's First Peoples, our Indigenous Australians, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians? Can I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging? Can I also acknowledge many veterans who may be with you, serving men and women of the Defence Force? It doesn't matter which town you visit in this country, every town has a war memorial because the members of our ADF come from every part of Australia and I want to thank them for their tremendous service to our country. We all know regional Australia has faced incredibly difficult challenges over the past few years. One of the worst droughts in recorded history, in fact the first place I went three and a half years ago when I became Prime Minister was to see the Tullys and Quilpy at their property which had been experiencing drought already for around six years. We've had the black summer of fires, we've had tornadoes, we've had mice plagues and many other natural disasters. Of course there has been the biggest pandemic the world has seen in 100 years. And most recently, again, the largest flooding in memory up there in northern New South Wales, across southeast Queensland, and down across the Hawkesbury and other parts of New South Wales. These disasters have all pushed our country to its very limits. Yet through it all, we have reaffirmed one simple truth, Australia's strength, our resilience. Even in the most challenging of times, we have found the ex exceptional spirit of the Australian people. Now, I remember when I went to see the Tullys up there in Quilpie, as we looked out on what was a moonscape on their property, they showed me the pictures of grass up to our hips. And they expressed a hope and a confidence in the future. And when I went back to see the, the Tullys about a year or so ago, they showed me Again, the same paddock, and it was about up to our shins, and they could see things returning to life. During the pandemic, you did an extraordinary job. You kept food on the tables, you kept the supply chains going, you helped the country keep going. We have an extraordinary farming industry, but more importantly, we have an extraordinary farmers in our country, producing more than 90% of our domestic food, generating tens of billions of dollars in exports for our nation. This year, the farm value of production is reach, forecast to reach a record 81 billion. We're well on track for that $100 billion goal. Your success is our whole nation's success. It's why my government is backing you and backing your bold plan to become a $100 billion industry by 2030. The budget handed down last week is about a long-term plan that creates more jobs and it also provides a shield for Australians against cost of living increases. Your industry is foundational to our economic plan and that's why we've just announced more than $600 million in agriculture specific spending in this year's budget to improve biosecurity capabilities and responses, to support our rural and regional communities with health care, modernising Australia's trading system to help you get your products to markets easier, to improve drought resilience and preparedness, and to tackle that awful problem of pests and weeds. This government is about the growth of our agricultural industries and the regions that they enable. And can I pay a special tribute to Barnaby Joyce and David Littleproud for the exceptional work that they have been doing. We've worked with you to secure access to new labour and export markets and new income streams for farmers. We have recently signed the Australia-India Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement, providing new opportunities with one of the fastest growing economies in the world. It is a big door we have just opened with India, a big door which we want to see more of our primary producers being able to walk through and to ensure that they're accessing this important market. And there's more work to be done there, and I know you know that, but we've made the initial um, achievement here of getting that door open and things, whether it's on wool or on crayfish or many others, we are really starting to ensure that we can access that important market, giving you the diversity of markets that you need to look forward to the future with confidence. 
Just last week, Australia and Vietnam signed the first bilateral memorandum of understanding under the new agricultural visa program. Now I know that's something you've been looking forward to for some time. I certainly know it's something David Littleproud has been working hard to achieve in his role as Agricultural Minister and I want to thank in particular him. I want to thank Maurice Payne for the fine work she's done as Foreign Minister to secure these agreements, um, the one with Vietnam, and Alex Hawke for what he's doing to make that happen on the ground as the Minister for Immigration. Ensuring our farmers continue to have the labour you need to realise your opportunities. We've also recently introduced legislation to create a tradable biodiversity certificate, creating additional income opportunities while continuing to build Australia's reputation as a sustainable supplier to the world. Now this builds on the more than 100 billion this government has committed to regional Australia since 2013. That's right, 100 billion. I know, my government knows, my coalition government between the Liberals and the Nationals know that Australia is way more than our eight capital cities all around the country. The wealth of our nation resides in the regions and in this budget we are now investing a further $21 billion to unlock that wealth in our region and the opportunities that are there in regional Australia so that businesses including your agricultural businesses, your farms, can grow. We're investing in securing water, including the Hells Gates Dam, road, rail and regional connectivity. The two billion regional accelerator program. I really want to commend Bridget McKenzie working so closely um, with me on this occasion to ensure that we could get that program in place. What this does is takes our most successful programs, uh, whether it be in manufacturing, for example, on food processing. We want to increase the link between the primary producers and the manufacturing producers in the food and beverage industry. Programs that will drive transformative economic growth and productivity in regional areas. Through the Accelerator program, we're extending existing programs targeted regions, including manufacturing, industry development, research and development, education, ensuring we get a closer link between our universities and the scientists and researchers there with our farmers and with our manufacturers. It's a great ecosystem we're seeking to build. Now I know that many of you are grappling with unprecedented floods, especially in New South Wales and South East Queensland, and we're determined to get you back on your feet. And we've acted to get money and support into the hands of those who need it and as fast as we can. We've set up income support payments to help farmers and small businesses and locally, local community groups rebuild. And to date we've provided over $2.7 billion to the flood recovery effort including the primary producer grants of up to 75,000. Every single time I walk into a flood affected region of this country, I am always reminded of the time when I stood up outside of Cloncurry and Julia Creek in the dreadful floods that saw hundreds and thousands of head of our livestock industry literally washed out to sea. And now I see what's occurring up in Northern Queensland and the rebuilding effort that was made possible by the programs of support that we put in place to save the livestock industry in Northern Queensland and ensure it could get back on its feet. And when I see that, I know what can be achieved in Northern New South Wales, in particular, when it comes to recovering from these floods. We've done it time and time again. And the programs and support that we provide, we know work and we just need to continue to work together, particularly with the state governments, to ensure we connect those who need the support with the clear support that is available. So we will stand with you to ensure that you can rebuild swiftly. We've done it before, we will do it again, we will get through this as we always have. In the coming months, Australians, they'll have a very important choice. It's a choice between who's got the record of managing an economy through a global pandemic and recession, while maintaining our AAA credit rating and seeing unemployment fall to 4%, that's down from 5.7%. You know, when the Labor Party were last in government with Kevin Rudd, they took an unemployment rate of 4.2% from John Howard and turned it into a 5.7% unemployment rate under Kevin Rudd. Now, that's extraordinary. Now, my opponent, he's never delivered a budget, not one, but he's relying on Rudd economics um, when it comes to how he wants to manage the economy into the future. But as I said, when they were last in government, they faced 
an economic challenge, definitely, the global financial crisis. But you know, what we've been through over the last few years is 30 times worse. Now, that's, that is not any sort of assessment that we've made up on our own. When you look at what the impact on the global economy has been from the pandemic compared to the global financial crisis, we have faced as a government an economic crisis 30 times worse than what we faced during the global financial crisis. And under our government, we're enable Australians to get into jobs and come through this, and we've done 50% better than the Labor Party did when they faced their crisis when they were in government. So a, a situation 30 times worse, and we've done 50% better when it comes to employment and keeping people in jobs. You know, that comes from experience. That comes from knowing how to put a budget together, to manage an economy, to keep a AAA credit rating, to have a plan which makes Australia stronger at a time we're under the greatest threat. And so there will be a choice. My opponents, never done a budget. I've done eight. As both a member of the Expenditure Review Committee, as a Treasurer, I've done three, and then four also as Prime Minister. But from that very first one, um, before the other seven came along, I've always had the opportunity to understand the fullness of how a government must work and the processes you need to have in place for responsible economic management. So there is a choice about who is best able to keep our economy strong for a stronger future and who can stand up for our country and defend it in these very uncertain times. Australia is, as I said, much more than our eight capital cities. We get that, always have. Our regions have always been a powerhouse of economic activity and income generation, providing resources, manufactured goods and food and fibre to the world. So only our Liberals' national government can be trusted to back in our farmers and to back in our regions. And you know that because you've seen us do it. You've seen us do it in the, in the toughest of times and in the best of times because we believe in what you do in our regions. We believe in what you do for Australia. And I want to thank you for everything you've done for Australia. Now we're coming out of this pandemic. The droughts are behind us. We're coming through the floods. We look forward to a great period of prosperity in our regions. And we will only achieve that by those in our regions and our government, Liberals and Nationals, working strongly together for that strong economy, which will give us a stronger future. Thank you very much.